Hello there and welcome to another episode of uh, Code Zonk here on the Tech Zonk channel. We're going to be continuing with Code Combat. Let's go ahead and begin. Alright, it looks like we've got some new stuff to equip here. Let's take a quick look at it. It's going to grant us a new skill. And the skill is called Is Ready. It returns whether the given action is ready to be used again. So that's kind of interesting and different. Let's see, do we need to equip anything else? Alright, we still will hang on to the shield that we've got. Do we need to grab this? I don't think we need to grab this. It's only pointing to this, so we're just going to go ahead and equip the, the new skill. And then we'll press play. Code combat. Okay, so what we've got is we have a new sword with the method cleave. And a new watch with the method is ready. Cleave is a special attack that hits all nearby enemies, but it can only be used every so often. So before you cleave, you have to check if it's ready. And it gives us an example right here. So if self dot is ready cleave then go ahead and cleave the enemy that's been identified. So that's definitely new. Let's go ahead and press start and see what that's all about. So we've got the arrows here, like always, it's pointing out that we've got to take a look here at the code block and see what it is that we're looking for. It tells us first that our new cleave skill we can use as often as possible. So as often as you can, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can just use it. You have to check to see if that is ready. So let's go ahead then. We'll follow the advice here and, and just do what we need to do here on the yellow arrows. We're going to say after we do a check for if self.isReadyCleave, then we will cleave the enemy. So you'll see here on line 5, the enemy has been identified on line 5. And then that's what we're actually performing this action on. If the cleave isn't ready, do your normal attack, it says. Well, that's interesting, and I'm not 100% sure what the normal attack is. I think that might be that. Let's go ahead and try it. Okay, so we know that on line 12, we do not actually have uh, the correct... The correct action here and i'm not 100 percent sure what it is that they're looking for so what i might have to do just to keep us from going down a rat hole is click on this blue help button and see what they're expecting let's do let's go ahead and do that now and then we'll come right back to this all right so let me go back here and it looks like i failed to equip my sword which is a problem uh yeah so when you don't equip the sword then you don't have the attack command so that was my problem I should now have everything equipped, so I've got the watch for the is ready, and I've got my sword. So now when I go back, I should have that function available to me. I'm going to go right ahead and start the level. We'll go right back here. There's no cleave, but self has a method cleave. Ah, oh, right, here we go. So we'll go ahead and say self, cleave enemy, self attack, and we'll go ahead and submit that. <laughs> Oh, I died. Okay, so here's what I've done. I've gone ahead and I've re-equipped a new shield. The new shield gives me um, additional health and uh, ability to, to block enemy attacks. And I've, and I've included the shield command here in my else statement so that I uh, use my shield to block enemy attacks every once in a while. And then I go ahead and I use the regular attack. And it looks like throughout the course of this loop life cycle, you only use the cleave a couple of times. When you use it, it's very devastating to your enemies, but it does do what it's supposed to do, and it wipes out a handful of enemies at one time. So we're go we'll go ahead and submit this. I'll, I'll give you a, a quick look at the code here. It's really simple. It's in the middle of this loop. We, we just basically repeatedly look for the nearest enemy. If cleave is ready, then we use it. Otherwise, I first use my shield, and then I attack. So let's go ahead and press submit and see this work in its randomized function. <clears throat> and there you have it. 
So we'll go ahead and collect our experience points and our gems, and then we'll move on to the next level. And let's see what faces us as we continue to progress. Let's see what we've got here. We've got the shield rush, it says. We've, we're going to be making use of basic syntax and arguments, strings and variables like we have before, loops and if statements. So nothing new here. Let's go ahead and see what we've got. So it does look like we have a new shield. Let's have a look at it. We'll compare it to what's there. So let's see what the shield actually grants us. It grants us uh, additional... Uh, it looks like additional health. Uh, blocks 38% of damage. However, the one that I've got right now is significantly better. So I'm just going to go ahead and hang on to what I've got. I've also got some shoes here, it looks like. I believe that these are new. Skills granted. This is just movement. Uh, it doesn't look like it gives me anything else. Let's take, let's take a look at the, what I've got. The, what I've got right now allows for the use of move X, Y to a certain position. So these shoes may actually be necessary for what it is that we're doing. So I'll go ahead and I'll move, I'll use those. So that's going to make use of move down, move left, move right, and move up as opposed to move X, Y. So let's go ahead and press play. And if we made a mistake, we can always go back and re-equip what we had. So let's see what we're doing here. We're going to be using shield to endure the onslaught. So we have access to a new method. It's called shield. Of course, I just used that. We'll combine if else statements to use shield while you wait for cleave to be ready. So we're going to be sure to use a while true loop as you shield for a short time. So let's go ahead and press start and see what that means. So when both, so survive both waves by shielding and then cleaving. When cleave is not ready, use your shield. You'll need to, you'll need at least 142 health to survive, it says. And, I, and we definitely have that. So we're in good shape to start. So let's take a look. We know that we want to do a loop. Okay, so obviously there's not much different here than what we did in the last one. So let's go ahead and see if we can use what we just did. See if that helps us at all. So we're going to first identify our enemies. And then what we'll do is we'll say if self dot is ready cleave then we'll go ahead and we'll cleave the nearest enemy, which will actually affect all of the enemies. But then we want to say else. Just go ahead and use the shield. And supposedly that should do it. We should be able to hold that shield and survive the enemy onslaught. Some of the enemies will still be getting us but we'll be able to block some of it, and it should keep us alive while we wait for the sh for the cleave action to, to, to be available. So let's go ahead and submit it and see if we were okay. Here they come. Okay, and we did it. That was pretty simple. Not unlike what we just saw. So let's go ahead and continue and see what else we've got. All right, so we're moving up here. This is battle head-to-head -head against another hero in this basic beginner combat arena. That's kind of interesting. So I will hang on to my shield. I think I'll hang on to everything I've got here and just play. It doesn't give me any sort of hints on what I can experience here, but defeat the enemy hero. Your hero must survive, it says. You'll never defeat me. So I'm unsure if this is... Okay, let me go ahead and pause this. It's not pausing it. There we go, okay, so. Fix your code. It says we have an empty loop. Put four spaces in front of a statement inside of a loop. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. I understand that. So we're going to find the enemy, and we're gonna, going to attack the enemy inside of a loop. When you're done, submit to the multiplayer ladder. Submit to the multiplayer ladder. 
I don't know what that means. Now, if I zoom out, will that make it more obvious? Uh, no, it will not make it more obvious. So I don't know exactly what it is that I'm doing, but what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll do what I know we have done in the past to locate an enemy. We'll go ahead and make use of find the nearest enemy. And then, um, well, you know what? Considering what we know, we can say, um, if is ready, cleave. We can go ahead and cleave the enemy. And then we'll simply say else attack the enemy. So again, not unlike what we're used to seeing. Uh, the only thing that I'm not clear on is what it means to submit to the multiplayer ladder. I don't see what they're referring to here. So let's go ahead and run it and see. I think I'm dying. Okay, well I, I beat the bad guy. Uh, I was barely alive, however. But I managed to survive, and, and because I survived, it says that I've won. Let's go ahead and press submit, and we'll see it uh, replayed in front of us again. And uh, I made it. So that's it's getting a little unusual here. I'm not 100% sure what this means, but I'm not seeing a lot of variation here now in our challenges. So, okay. I don't know what this is. Code combat. So I think this is going to allow me to now watch somebody else play. Mm -hmm. Wow, these guys mean business. Okay, so let's see if we can go ahead and get back to, uh, get back to what we were doing. All right, back at the Backwoods Forest, we're going to go ahead and uh, go with their next level recommendation here, which is called Peasant Protection, where we will once again be working with loops and if statements. Let's go ahead and begin. It is asking me to go ahead and re-equip the shoes that I was wearing before. It does want me to also include these glasses, so this is... Uh, going to provide me with new skills. Not only can I find the nearest enemy, but I can find the nearest item, and I can also return the distance in meters to a specific target. So we'll go ahead and select that, and we will press play. Code combat. Okay, if an enemy gets too close to you, you can attack it. Otherwise, you have to move to the X to stay close to the peasant. Remember, you can find the distance using distance equals distance to the enemy. So if an enemy gets too close to you, you can attack it. Otherwise, we need to move to the X to stay close to the peasant. So is the peasant going to be moving then? All right, let's take a look at the code. The code is usually a good hint on where we can get started. So what we're doing is we're actually in the middle of a loop. We're identifying the nearest enemy. We're identifying the distance to the nearest enemy. And if the distance is less than 10, then we are going to attack the enemy because the enemy is now too close to the peasant. So we'll go ahead and make use of our attack. Else, we're just going to stay close to the peasant. And we're going to do that how... I see. I think that the enemy is going to move close to us. We're going to have to go attack the enemy, and then we're going to have to move near the near the peasant. So let's go ahead and do a self move x y, and we'll go to forty and thirty three. Let's try that. All right, so this is looking good. As the enemy comes close, I attack him. When the enemy goes away, I go back to my spot. Okay, so I think we're in the I think we're we're going down the right path here. Let's go ahead and submit it and see how it works.
It's like I'm keeping up. No bad guys are getting to my peasant, which is good. Okay, so we were victorious. We do get our experience points and our gems. I'll go ahead and I'll close the video up there. You'll see that we're still working with loops and if statements. Um, so as far as the variety of things are concerned, the variety isn't changing much from what we've seen in previous videos. But we'll go ahead and get through the next couple of levels and see if there are new lessons for us here. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see all of you next week with more Code Combat. Thanks for watching.